seems that this is the place. I don't know. Let's hope so. We need to find it before someone else does. Okay, I'm counting on you out there. Thank you. I'm doing my best. I think we're the first ones here. Let's hope that this is the place. So I really hope that you enjoyed that short because I felt like I had to do something about like the whole hype about buying insane amounts of toilet paper. It's just like, I don't know why. And I actually recorded it all by myself, just putting my camera on the tripod and then lighting up the scene with the flashlight and one of these tubes that I've been using in a couple of my videos lately. I highly recommend these if you are looking for some really great lighting for your videos. But with that said, there's been a lot of you asking me on how I make an anamorphic flare in my videos, even though I'm not using an anamorphic lens. And there's actually some of you that asked me if I used an anamorphic lens, but no, I, like I, even though I would have loved to have an anamorphic lens, they were way too expensive. So that's not gonna happen, no, no. But what I do instead is that I'm using a plugin for Final Cut Pro and Premiere Pro if you're using Mac OS that will generate like a really, really good looking anamorphic flare for your video. So I thought I'd show you the entire process of using the plugin and how simple it is to actually make a really good looking anamorphic flare in your videos. No matter if you're shooting like 4K or 1080p, it's gonna give you a really professional look. And if you're interested in buying it, I'm gonna drop a link down below so you can just go there and shot bit yourself. So the first thing that you want to do is just have the clips on your timeline that you want to add the flare to. And then we're going to go down to the plugin M flare 2. And as you can see, like there's a bunch of different flares that you can use. So it doesn't really matter if you want to shoot a sci-fi movie, if you want to like just add some nice flares to your travel video or something else, there's definitely going to be something for you that you can use. But personally, I've been using a flare that's called Police. Flashlight, huh? So we're gonna mark this and then we're gonna drag it onto the clip. And if we play this back now, you can see that there's just like, it's basically just a fixed point. So it doesn't follow the actual light on screen. So we are going to change that. So we're gonna set the playhead at the beginning of the clip. And then we're gonna drag the center point to center of the flashlight. And then we're gonna reduce the brightness and reduce the global size of this because we don't wanna have it too big since the flashlight is kinda of tiny. And then you wanna go down to the tracker that is gonna be here. And then you can see that this square is showing up here. And what you wanna do with that is make sure that it's like just covering like the flashlight, the light of the flashlight. So I'm gonna make it a little bit wider than the flashlight, somewhere around there. And when you're done with that, you just wanna hit track. Then we wait. All right, it's all done. So let's have a look on how it looks. Ooh. Now that looks really good. So at the end here, you can see that as I'm walking out of frame, the, like, the light is just stuck at the top of the frame. So that is something that we want to remove. So we're going to jump to like this frame. And then we want to go up to the effect. And we are going to set a keyframe on the brightness. And then you want to go forward one, two, three frames. And then we're going to set another keyframe on the brightness. And then we're going to drag it all the way down. So when we play it back once again, then you can see that as the flashlight is moving out of frame, the light disappears as well, which is mm. But a couple of adjustments that I want to make to this is to make sure that the flashlight is looking a little bit more like bluish because I want to have it like uh, looking like a blue police light. So we are gonna choose the mode from five colors to three 
And then we're gonna choose these extending arms here and we're gonna drag it into the middle. And then we're gonna choose the big one and drag it to towards the blue. Then we are going to go down to the post effects and we are gonna go to the saturation and we're gonna drag this all the way up to plus three. And then I'm gonna change like the aberration point that is here. So I'm gonna like put it down here. So if we play this back again, you can see the light is way more blue this time around, which looks, mm. So now that we're done with this clip, we wanna add it to the next clip as well. So we're gonna hit Command C, and then we're gonna go up to the next clip and we're gonna hit Command Shift V and hit enter. Va? But if we play this back, you can see that like the tracking is way off because we tracked the light from the previous clip. So we're gonna do a new tracking to this clip. So we're gonna set the playhead at the beginning of this clip and then we're gonna make sure that we mark the effect and then go to tracker and clear all tracking and then hit OK. So now we can drag the lighting to make sure that center is over the flashlight. And then we're gonna adjust the box, which is gonna be the tracking box, to be just outside the flashlights area. And then we're gonna go down to the yellow button here and then we're gonna hit track. It is done, so let's have a look, shall we? All right, that actually looks really, really good. We just didn't want to remove the keyframes from the brightness since we copied this from the last clip. And then I want to like increase the global size because the, the flashlight is way closer to the actual camera this time around. So let's, let's play it back once again. This looks way better. I like it. Okay, so there's a bunch of different adjustments that you can do to the flares to make it look the perfect way for your kind of videos. But we're not done yet because another cool thing that you can use this plugin for is to actually add a flare onto your thumbnails or onto your photos if you want to do that. And that is something that I've been doing to my thumbnails for the last, I don't know, maybe like nine months, I think. And there's been a lot of you wondering how I do that. And the good thing about this plugin is that you don't like have only one flare that you can choose from. You have a bunch of them and you can like edit them in a bunch of different ways to make them look different even though you're using the same flare. So I'm gonna use this picture that I have as a thumbnail for the hacker b-roll, but this is without the flare that I added. So like basically this is the final results from Photoshop with no flare. And one flare that I've been using lately is called Afterglow. So I'm gonna type it in and then we're gonna drag this onto the image and once again we're gonna drag the center point down and I want to put it like on the Apple brand so we're gonna put it right here and then we're gonna like increase the global size and we're gonna change the aberration a little bit so that it's maybe like on top of the keyboard and then we're gonna change the mode from three colors five colors to three and then change this and like make it a little bit more blue. And we're gonna go into the post effects and we're gonna increase the saturation. And I gotta say, this looks pretty good. So when you feel satisfied with the look of your image and have the flare or flares as you want them, then just go to file, choose share, and then save current frame. And then you can go to the settings and then you can choose JPEG, PNG, TIFF, or whatever you wanna have it as. Uh, I'm gonna choose JPEG for this and then I'm gonna hit next and I'm gonna save it as the hacker b-roll and there you go that is how I do my flares for my thumbnails and for my videos so I really hope that uh, you enjoyed this video and if you did please do give it a thumbs up because that would be highly appreciated and if you haven't subscribed it's gonna be right down here this is uh, just a call out <laughs> Um, but yeah, thanks so much for watching, I really appreciate it and uh, would love to hear your opinions on this tutorial down below, so do drop a comment as well. Uh, Peter from Sweden, out! If you're watching this far into the video, then I just want to say thank you for watching all the way to the end. The walkie-talkie voices that you heard in the beginning is actually me 
both of them, both the bright one and both the dark one. I just like recorded them in GarageBand and then I modulated them in Final Cut Pro. And if you want like a tutorial on how to do that, drop a comment below because then I might just do one. Uh, but yeah, thank you. See ya, take care, wash your hands, everything else, <laughs> all good.